818. Traffic and weather together on WCBS. Beautiful day from what I remember. Beautiful, yes. clear day. Blue skies, Ooh, clear nice. as day, and I cloud in the sky. It's early morning. Lieutenant Dennis Mojica had just run the overnight shift with five of the men. Because of an injury, Joe Angelini was on light duty at another firehouse on Roosevelt Island. Weiss, Guidel, Sweeney, Marino, and three others were about to start the day shift under the command of Captain Terry Hatton. CBS News Time, 820. You know, it's always fun when we can see Daddy, and I always, the kids love it. On that morning, Katrina Marino stopped by to switch cars with her husband, Kenny. So, well, let me stop by there. I'll trade the minivan for the car. We'll see Kenny. It'll be nice. She was with their two children and arrived just before 9. So he came out, and then he brought the kids in and put them on the fire truck, and they were just happy as pie, you know, to be there. And his, the look of pride on Kenny's face when he's with his children is just, he adores them. But as she was leaving, she felt something. He went to each car door. Instead of just leaning over and kissing Tyler, he went around, opened the door, gave him a big kiss and a hug, and same with Kristen, and then same with me. Driving away, the former flight attendant then heard something. A big airplane went overhead. And I said, Tyler, look at the airplane. That was really close, you know, not thinking that it would ever crash. Tom Kaminsky, Chopper 880. All right, uh, Pat, we are just currently getting a look at the World Trade Center. We have something that has happened here at the World Trade Center. It took less than a minute for the alarm bell to sound here at Rescue One, high-rise fire downtown. Had this been the middle of a shift, six men would have responded, but this was shift change, and there were 10 firemen here, and so everybody piled on board the truck and sped off downtown toward the kind of high-rise fire no one could have imagined. There are fire crews just screaming into this area from every conceivable direction. What's going through their minds as they're heading down there? I have no doubt that there was a lot of planning going on. I can envision Captain Hatton barking out orders and telling the guys, you know, where they're going to go and what they're going to do. They probably had a decent look at the building from a distance so they could see as they were coming down what's going on, probably counting floors, how much fire is there. What exactly had happened they didn't yet know, but they soon would. We have no footage of Rescue One on that day, but we do know what they saw and what they did, at least early on. It's certainly the biggest thing that we had ever seen, and we've seen a lot. Fireman Tim Brown from another unit is Terry Hatton's best friend. And he probably had his binoculars up, and he's probably trying to get a good look at it to see what was going on and listening to the radio reports. Tim was in the lobby of Tower One when Hatton arrived, and it seems clear now the commander of Rescue One knew what he and his men would soon be in for. So I went over to him, and uh, he wrapped his arms around me with his tool and gave me a kiss on the cheek and said, love you, brother. Don't know if I'll see you again. And he went off uh, into the stairwell to do his job. It, it looked that bad at that moment. It was very bad. A major high-rise fire, the amount of heat that can be generated, plus add in the jet fuel, you have an amazing amount of heat in front of you. As they were trained to do, Captain Terry Hatton and his men, each lugging some 60 pounds of oxygen tanks and tools, started climbing the stairs up Tower 1. What was their plan of attack? Go up to the fire floor and just assist with the evacuation. I'm sure that one of their main things that they were talking about was everybody stay together. Let's not get separated. Oh, they were probably all pumped up, fighting the big one, I guess. Joe Angelini also heard the call. On light duty elsewhere that morning, he grabbed some gear, hopped on a truck, and headed downtown. Of course he'd be there. He didn't realize he was 63. Thought he was still in maybe in his 20s or 30s. Anne, who was married to Joe for 41 years, was at home. What do you imagine as he's racing down to the scene he was, he was thinking about? Probably our son. Like father, like son. It's my son. Joe's eldest, Joey, was also a fireman. He was also working that day. He was also killed. They were, they were very close, weren't they not? Very close. 
How long did you wait before you knew anything? Well, um, I think the 11th, they called my daughter-in-law that Joey was among the missing. And um, I think I was notified the next day that my husband was missing. They found my husband a week later. He was more or less helping the people, you know, evacuate the building. Uh, he was tending first aid to a couple of people in the street also when the uh, buildings came down. When the towers collapsed, Captain Terry Hatton, Lieutenant Dennis Mojica, the unforgettable Dave Weiss, the veteran Joe Angelini, and seven more Rescue One heroes were killed, nearly half of the company. They and the vast majority of the rest of the New York City Fire Department were trapped in the two largest building collapses that ever happened. They were doing what we do. On this day, September 11, 2001, 343 New York City firefighters died doing their job. How do you total up the loss from that day in your unit? I don't think you total it. It's horrible. None of us will ever forget it. Everyone's affected in different ways. I think we feed off each other, too. And we lean on each other, and we depend on each other to get us through this. I will continue Captain Hatton's legacy and Lieutenant Mojica's legacy and the nine firemen that I've known to love and respect. Even after seven and a half years of being together, I always look forward to him coming home. To me, it felt like the world, I, I, as I had known it, had come to an end. Yet, out of all the terrible endings, there is a remarkable new beginning. I think you have to view it as a miracle. That's next on 48 Hours.